Welcome to the Online Success Journey Podcast, your opportunity to discover and learn from entrepreneurs like yourself. This is not your typical podcast, but a place where you can get the real story and find out how real people encounter speed bumps and detours, but journey through to find success. Now here's your host for the Online Success Journey Podcast, Patience. Hello everyone and welcome to Online Success Journey. This is episode 297 and you'll want to subscribe right now and ensure you'll never miss a journey. The entrepreneurs that join me each week review the steps they took on their journey to success and these steps reveal a path you can take as well. Today we have Lucas Walker, a serial entrepreneur having started three successful businesses in the software, e-commerce, media spaces, and working on bootstrapped and ventured funded companies. Hello, Lucas. Hey, thank you so much for having me, Patience. What a, what an honor to, to be here today. Oh, thank you for coming. My audience are excited to hear your story, but just start by telling us one thing we are going to learn from you today that will help us on our journey to success. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, hopefully I, I drop a, a few nuggets and, and stories uh, along the way, but if you only take away one thing from this, I hope that it's uh, as a founder, it should be an enjoyable journey, especially uh, at times. And that you you've got to have some fun while while you do it because it's it's long hours it's probably less pay than you'd make working for someone else so if you you're working more and not making as much money you got to at least have a little bit of fun wow i can't wait to hear that let's get started with the basics can you tell my audience a little bit about your background about what you did before you started your own business yeah i mean i worked in software before starting my first company then gauge uh, an infographic maker then i uh, it's still around today one of the top 25 startups named by by linkedin here in canada i started a uh, natural dog treat consumer packaged goods company which led me in my my journey to e-commerce and then i recently started my my rolled up podcast network so i've got a few shows on that, a couple that I host, a couple that I produce, and I'm really looking forward to growing that as I really expand my my, my own network and do do a few more shows. What a background, Lucas! But why do you do what you do? I think it's, uh, and I'm going to play a little bit of words on here, but I think I'll leave the the patience to you. Where I just I see a problem. And I get tired of waiting for somebody to come along and make it better, whether it's a better mousetrap or an opportunity or things just go too slow. And I, I get impatient and I, I guess I go to cut the line and take, take matters in my own hands to hopefully come up with a, a fix to that problem or a solution that people like. Let's put the man aside. How do you know you're successful in your new venture? I, I don't think that we can put money aside. I think that you need to have some indication of of cash flow for me it was the fact that i had a sponsor before a show so i knew that there was something there but i think it's important to remember that as a founder and, and as an entrepreneur it is a business and you have to go and make some money and it might not be the total amount of money that you need but it's definitely going in that right direction if you uh, start a business and build a website and you, you don't get any sales that could be an indicator that something's wrong I think that once you you do get that money aside, I think it's the feeling of knowing that you're excited to get up tomorrow and, and work on the new challenges. What have you learned from business as a whole? Um, I think one thing that I've really learned is that it's the job's never done. You If you keep on saying, one more task or one more thing at the end of the day, you're never going to go home. You have to be able to step back and, and come back. The, the doors will open tomorrow. The sun's going to come up. The customers are there, but it's really, there's always, there's always tomorrow and don't let that uh, impact your judgment today. What is your biggest mistakes and regrets that you have made going international too early? Yeah, I think that that's a great question. And it was with uh, Treats Happen, our, our natural dog treat company. And instead of really focusing on honing in 
uh, our logistics and product and everything. I, I expanded to the U S versus being just in Canada. And the reason that, that, that I did that was a lot of the data showed me that people are coming to the website from, or from the U S so it made more sense, but it really just doubled the work without increasing the amount of revenue. And that's something that's really important to consider is that when you, you grow on both an X and Y axis, what's going to happen is that you start taking twice as long, or if you're familiar with sort of the, the square theory that it's, it's not just, so if you think of multiplying square feet, it, it gets to be very big, very fast, but it doesn't necessarily, um, come back to you right away. So I think the, the reason that that was such a big mistake was it ate up so much of our already limited resources. Tell my audience about the magic moment, the day suddenly all went right for you. You know what? I think it was, um, and there are a few examples, but for me, it's always been when I get that first big client. So with, uh, with Vengage, it was, when we started to get a little bit of PR for the product versus just save raising funding. And I think that for Treats Happen, it was when we got our first big wholesale order. And for Rolled Up, it was when I got my first big name guest coming in. So for me, that magic moment is always when you you do something that would make you stop and say, how, how the hell did we get here? How did we get to this point? This is way farther than we ever thought we'd come. And you know it's possible. You know it's doable. But it's never what you think it is. As I mentioned, you are in business for a while now and venturing in different spaces. But can anyone be an entrepreneur or are some people more cut out for it than others? Yeah, no, I think absolutely everyone can and should be even just approaching your own life. Instead of balancing accounting books, you should absolutely be in tune with your your finances and, and almost take some of that mindset to um, to your day to day. Having said that, it can be a hard journey where you do get punched in the face. People don't believe in you. They wonder what the what you're doing, why you, you keep showing up day in and day out. But it really is a mix of something that's for everyone and gives everyone a chance to, to play uh, whether or not they're, they're ready. And I also think that it's an opportunity that's not for the faint of heart. When you, you start something, it is a big commitment. It's like having a child. It's not just something you can do for a few weeks. You've, you've got to see it through a, a number of years. What are you still doing in the way you work that you just know you have to stop doing? Oh, there's tons. Nothing, hmm. nothing critical. Um, I, I could be a little bit more organized or be a little bit more proactive. But overall, I think I'm finally tuned into to what I'm doing. I'm trying really hard not to to work too many hours a day and enjoy my evenings, especially now that the the nicer weather is coming here in Toronto. But I think one thing that I've been very guilty of is being too too committed to just work, 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 work all the time and not realizing that that's uh, working a, a 14 hour day. That's a place you can go in an emergency. That's not where you should be mm -hmm. hanging out every day. And the analogy I always like to use is your, your car and your idling. When you're cruising down the highway, you are maybe revving the engine at 3000 RPMs. But then when you, you have to really go up a hill or take or pass someone, you, you can go up and maybe redline that, the engine, but you don't want it to be sitting there all the time. What is the most dangerous belief an entrepreneur can have? Oh, uh, if you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. You have to build a product, but if you're not distributing it, promoting it, selling it, you're, you're going to fail. And I think that everyone takes all this time to make the perfect product. And this isn't to say that quality isn't important. That's, that's not the point. You have to be, there's a, a threshold of, you have to be at least this good to enter. But beyond that, take, you have to be willing to put the effort and funding into promotion and distribution. If you had to rerun the first year of your business, 
What would you definitely not do? Um, I think that I would definitely not make as many commitments early on, like long-term commitments and contracts, and really focus more on building my organic audience through my own channel. So my email list, my SEO position, my, my podcast, my videos, and so on. I think that that would be the most critical thing I would do differently in the first year is just really making sure I have enough runway to, to build a really solid organic foundation. Why do we need to use the holidays? Yeah, and I think that this is really related to to e-commerce, but holidays are fun. If I say, hey, patients, I'm throwing a 4th of July barbecue, do you want to come? Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It doesn't always have to be a sale, but there are, are always fun ways to reach out to your customers as an e-commerce brand, and you really have to think, okay, is this a time to sell my products or is this a time to remind customers why they like me? And it depends on what you're doing, but if you can find a way to tie your product into the holiday, it's so much more enjoyable for your customers. Your email list engagement goes up, your email list health goes up, and you end up just having much better results when you do go to really promote hard down the road. What is the most valuable thing you have ever given away? Oh, uh, I don't know. That's a good, like in terms of, see, I'm thinking like an advice that I might've given someone. I don't know, like a physical good that's particularly valuable that I've given away. Something you think it was, it's valuable to you and you just give it away to your customers, your friends, your family. Yeah, I don't know. One thing, that's a great question. Um, I don't know. And it's it's always hard to say because what might be, if it's valuable to me, I'm probably not going to give it away. But I could be, I could give away something, I could give something away to someone and it could change their life. So for me, it could be maybe an old microphone that I'm not using. And then they they use it, they love it, and it really turns into their own podcast and who knows where that goes. So I would say those two things. So I, I don't know. Uh, it's, you, you stumped me patience. I, I don't think that I could, I don't know if I had to give a piece of advice that I give away. That's, that's always really valuable. It's to only listen to, to those who give you money. So your customers, um, but I don't know. That's a really good, tough question. Tell us about little hacks and shortcuts for brand getting started. Yeah, um, I think that it's important to really highlight your customers because once you show that you have customers, it creates social proof of, hey, this is a product that I buy. People want this and you don't have to spend a ton of money on photography or anything else. So don't be afraid to give away product to 10 or 20 people early on and get some photos and some testimonials back in exchange for them. What is one thing that has contributed to your success? I don't know if it's my resilience or my persistence or just my downright stupidity, but I just keep going. And when the waters get thick, you just keep putting one foot in front of the other and slowly make make progress and be able to be a little bit closer to your destination at the end of the day than when you started. What grounds you? I'm still working on figuring figuring that out um in terms of what keeps me me grounded probably being close to to my family in terms of times that i can just truly unplug riding a, a bike or a motorcycle uh barbecue and cooking probably that's what i would say keeps me pretty pretty grounded what, what's your definition of of grounded how do you how do you define being grounded my face grounds me You're, okay do you have a coach or a mentor in your business? Mm -hmm. I've been fortunate to have some, some really great mentors over the years. And I really look at mentorship as it's, it's all around you. And if you, when you open your eyes and bring it in, uh, you can find a mentor. You might have one conversation with a mentor that gives you that, that advice. But the, the one thing I would say is, know what you need to do 
and be really clear and specific before chatting with a mentor. Have good specific questions and do your research on what they've done. Because to me, you're really looking to figure out how can you emulate their success and not make the same mistakes that they did. So ask good specific questions and people tend to really open up when you show that you've done your homework. What is the most valuable thing your mentors has told you? One of my mentors, Peter Neal, really reminded me the importance of celebrating, whether it's something big or small. It really is important to to celebrate. I think the other thing that my mentors always really remind me of, and it's kind of a, a common theme amongst everyone is just hard work pays off. You do have to work hard. You're not going to fluke into it. It might get easy later on or down the road, but it, it is a lot, a lot of work. When you say a lot of work, many people are starting out. They don't want to hear the work. They think that they have seen people who are putting out these successful stories and they're like, hmm, four hours a week and everything is good. So now you, you are telling us we have to work hard. Yes, How hard can we do? 70 hours a week? Some weeks. Some weeks it'll be more than that. There'll be, there will, there'll be good weeks. So when you're just starting out from scratch, it's hard. You don't have that momentum. When, when a plane takes off, it uses, and I'm misquoting it here, but it's, it's a thing that quote, but it uses 80% of its fuel for takeoff. It's so much more effort to get something going off the ground than it is to, to keep it up. It's a lot of hard work. And whoever says it's not, I, I, I question it. I haven't met anyone successful <laughs> that doesn't put in the hard work. How long did it take you to pay yourself a salary? Yeah, um, months. I mean, because we were all fairly bootstrapped, it was a few a few months. But being able to to pay yourself as you you go with rolled up, I made sure I could do that from day one. So before I even started, because I had it as a little side hustle for a while. For Vengage, it was once we were able to get the the funding. But I think every founder and entrepreneur should have either money in the bank or a plan to to pay themselves. It's it's hard enough and stressful enough as it is. Why not add in a why add in the stress of not being able to pay your bills to that? And it really is the difference between a hobby and a business is being able to to pay yourself. What is one thing no one knows about you? One thing that nobody knows? Well, if I tell you that, everyone's going to know it. Know it. I'm, I'm not going to well, be able to answer that question in the future. Uh, but I think you'll that, create something else. <laughs> um, I think that something that I think is cool, but nobody else really seems to know, is that I was in a made-for-TV movie when I was 17. Um, I'm surprised more people don't don't bring it up to me, but I think that that's something that's kind of kind of cool and different. Why did you stop with then acting? You know what? It was just luck. They needed some some football players as as background work, and then, um, or I guess technically it would be more stunt work. But um, I just, yeah, I met the people who were doing it professionally, and I realized I just didn't want it as badly as they did. What is the most important question to ask someone who has bought from you? If I had to say, so I'm going to cop out because I saw this earlier and I wish I thought of it, but I saw a great question that was, why did you almost not buy from us? I think that that's a great question to really improve uh, what you've, what you've done. But I think one of the biggest things is to just ask, um, why, why did you buy? What, like, what did you like about us? And a lot of times the answer will be something different than you, what you think. It might be because you sell a five pack and nobody else does and they don't really care about the quality of your product. I think really asking customers why they bought is the most important thing. And then a close second is asking them how they bought. So did they go online first? Did they research their purchase? Did they hear somebody else um, recommended them? And really asking them how they bought is very important as well. Let's talk about your business. Tell us more about it. 
Yeah, I mean, Rolled Up is a podcast production and distribution network. So producing original podcasts as well as uh, distributing them and promoting them across the the network. How do we use this it's podcast platform? Yeah, so if you're you're interested, give the podcast a listen. It's very focused on on e commerce right now. But you you just search for Lucas Walker wherever you get your podcasts, and you can just hit uh, subscribe and hopefully leave a review. How can we get in contact with you other than that? Are you on social media? Yeah, if you Google Lucas Walker, you'll see a basketball player from Australia. You'll see a male model, and then you come across me. So to click on the guy that doesn't look like a basketball player or male model, that's me. You can also find me on Twitter at Walker Lucas, and of course on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you. There will be more from Lucas in a moment. If you are listening to this on a podcasting platform and you are encouraged by Lucas's journey, please go to our website at onlinesuccessjourney.com. The site has tons of audio clips from hundreds of successful entrepreneurs, guests, journey, all there to help you find a path for your own online success journey. The site offers exclusive members-only content and you can join absolutely free and be part of this amazing online success community today check it out that's online success journey.com and stop by and listen to my friend scott d clary's show the success story podcast where he discusses some of the lessons he's learned over his own career and you can listen in as he sits down with leaders mentors and unpacks their story on podcast.scottdclary.com and all other podcasts platform. Now, Lucas, I would love for you to share more with my audience if you are up for it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Do you like movies? Do you like to read books? Oh, I don't watch movies. Name three famous movies, and I probably haven't seen them, but I love reading. Okay, thank you. Tell us what is your favorite book that has some relevance to being an entrepreneur? Oh uh, man, you know what I've done? I've read so many, and I'm just looking around to see what I've been been reading lately. I really enjoyed Kara Golden, uh, her book Undaunted. She came on on my podcast, and I gave the book a read, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was one of the best looks at what being an entrepreneur is is like. I think Influenced by Robert Cialdini is a must read. Um, the Adweek Copywriting Handbook. It was one of the rare ones that I read cover to cover. I thought it was just fascinating. Um, but really, find what kind of books you like. I'm a huge biography fan. So biographies, I read a lot, a lot of baseball biographies. Yeah, I just find them really fascinating. And I find that the journey of success tends to be the same where you're going to have to overcome some obstacles and, and you power through it. But I really thoroughly enjoy biographies. If your business was down to its last $100, how would you invest it? Probably long-distance phone calls to my friends that I love them and that uh, it, it didn't work out. <laughs> you are so mean. <laughs> or on an accountant. <laughs> if you are going to keep a note to yourself in your pocket every day, what would be written in it? Now, this is mean. And it, it's funny because I, I said this recently, and it was on my to-do list to check if it, it was – was factual. Um, I think that I would, the serious answer is just to, to keep reminding myself to, to be patient and just let, just trust the process and, and don't try to rush it. But the example I always think of is David Ogilvy before a big meeting, he had a note that said, there's a 50% chance that you're wrong. And just as a reminder to him that maybe it's not the right, the right pitch or the right, um, the right solution for, for the client. So I always like that of sort of something humble before a really big presentation. And it's also kind of a reminder that it's, it's okay to not be perfect every single time. What is your next chapter? I think the next chapter is uh, I'm still trying to get to a million downloads on, on my podcast network. The faster I can get there, the better. Um, so, yeah, so I think that's the, the, the biggest thing is, is really growing the podcast network. Do you feel like you succeeded or like you're only on the way? Both. I've already won, but it's uh, I'm not just going for one title. So I think that you it's important to stop and 
really celebrate the successes that you have now, but remembering that where you are now, you, you would heckle yourself five years from now saying, I can't believe that that's where I was and look how far I've, I've come along. Would you ever stop? Uh, I, I doubt it. To remind us how we can connect with you. Yeah. So if you want to just find me on Twitter at Walker Lucas or set, find my, my podcast, those are really the, uh, the best way. Lucas, it's been a great to have you here to share your online success journey with us. Thank you so much for having me. You are welcome. That's a wrap. Remember, success is a journey. Patience and Lucas. This is not the end of the journey. We hope you've enjoyed listening to Patience and her guest and want you to know there are hundreds of episodes available at OnlineSuccessJourney.com. Patience would like to thank you for listening to the podcast, and she has a free gift for you on her website, including an audio compilation of her guests' best tips, uplifting stories, and even a bit of fun. Additionally, there are special clips of over 250 episodes that have never aired on the podcast, and they're only available to members of the online success journey. Check the website and click on Join Now to get free and instant access. Of course, you know that listening to the journeys of others helps each of us chart our own path. So make sure you're subscribed on your favorite platform to be notified as each new interview is posted. There are so many ways to stay connected to the online success journey and listen in. And if you're enjoying the podcast, we appreciate your help in telling others. One of the best ways to share the benefit you get is to rate and review the podcast at iTunes and other sites. We appreciate your help and your willingness to share your journey. One last thing. If you're feeling a bit lost or overwhelmed on your own journey, patience can help. Check out her course on clarity while you're at the website. Finding clarity is a great way to get back on the right path. On behalf of patience and until next time, thanks once more for listening. It is our hope that this podcast will guide you on your own online success journey.